in it. What is this about? I know we all have silhouette soft, it's all, all around, so we can have this information. Just have three types of sutures. They are made of cones, and the cones are hollow, like ice cream cones. That's the secret of it. And we have bidirectional cones. So half of it is facing one side, the other one is facing the other side. One gives lift, the other anchors. If you buy a boat, a nice boat, you want a solid pier to anchor it, otherwise it drifts up with the, with the tide. Here's the same thing. Your tide is your facial expression. Blowing a kiss to the maximum projection, like a big, big kiss, five newtons of force. So what you need to is something that can overcome that, or at the same time can hold it. That's physics, it's not inventing. So when it comes to volume reposition or lift, we did three things. To define a point of lifting, define a vector, and defining an anchoring point. That's how you build a house, that you get the, the crane, that's how you do a facelift, the same thing. And which are the points? Which are the fat pads that move with time? The superficial fat pads, the nasal labial fat pad, the jowl fat pad, the upper jowl and the lower jowl. And you always go into the mirror, or got the patient in the mirror saying, I want to get this. It's not this, it's this. It's up, it's not backwards. This comes from up, down, not from back, forward. It's as simple as that. And so when you, def when you plan it, and planning again is the most important part of the treatment, you define your lifting points. And these lifting points are going to be your most distal cone of the suture. Because if you don't hook to that, you lost it just stretching skin. And stretching skin is condemned to fail. Then you define your vector. And what we see is, if you have the upper jowl fat pad, which is the marionette line, divides more or less the mid face and lower face in two. Whatever you do above has to be more horizontal, otherwise you bring tissues into the eyelid. Whatever you do below has to be more vertical because where that's the vertical vector is more important. Simple. You don't need to make, invent the wheel again. And what are your anchoring points? Lateral to the big orifices on the face, which is the orbit and the mouth, which is lateral to the lateral contours, which you've got a more rigid and more fixed and less mobile area. That's why when you do a facelift, what you're doing is anchoring tissues over that area. The same thing with Rami did when he did the filler over the zygomatic arch, expand the zygomatic cutaneous ligament over the zygomatic bone. That's what you're looking for. And where you place threads. I never understand why physicians are more afraid of doing threads than fillers. The potential of complication of a filler is 100 times bigger than with the threads. What you can do with the threads, not obtaining any results having a bruising, or is a technical problem, you didn't respect the layer, and then you are too deep or too superficial. But if you are too deep, you have pain. If you are too superficial, you have pain. So the feedback of the patient tells you exactly what you need to know. So you use it there. And on these red circles, what you have are condensations of the, of the ligaments. And when you go with the thread on the subcutaneous area and you cross the marionette line, the patient always feels some sensation. Why? You're going through the mandibular septum. The same thing if you go over the preauricular fascia. Why? Because it's a more dense area. So you can't exactly predict where it's going to have some tenderness because ligaments might be the most stable structure we have in our face as we age. How do you plan it? And this is valid for any suture except for the distance. But the company has a ruler with the distance. You didn't need to memorize it. So this is my important cone, is the most distant one. This is the lifting one. And once you define that point, you measure in the eight cones, five to six centimeters. If it's a 12 cone, you measure eight to nine, and you get your entry point. Distally, you need to get one to 1.5 centimeters away from the last cone. Why? Because when you're gonna tighten the suture, skin will be redraped over the suture. If you are too close to the cone, it comes out. If it comes out, you lost it. So one to one centimeter. And on the anchoring side, at least more than six. 
can be seven, can be eight, but should not be less than six. Otherwise, you're going to lose one cone and you're going to lose one anchoring point. If you use the 12 cones, instead of five and six centimeters becomes eight to nine, instead of six and a half becomes eight. That's it. And then you have to select your patients. There are laxity scales. You cannot put the same number of sutures in everybody. So we have to define the aging. If you have someone that is severe, this is not a candidate for threads. This is a candidate for surgical approach. If you have someone the moderate to severe, is where you really need to combine things. You can need to combine volume, you need to combine volume reposition, toxins, energy devices. You have to combine everything you have. Well, then, if, even if you do surgery, you combine facelifts with fat grafting, which is volume. So we are doing, doing both things. So in the mid face, where will be your last cones? The last cones have to be on the nasal level fat pad and superior jowl fat pad. And in a moderate or mild case, you just need three sutures per side. So if I'm doing mid face, why should I need to treat the jowl also? Because the face is not artificially divided as we do. So if you lift the cheek, you leave the jowl behind, that's not going to look nice. You have to do both. And you have a more complicated case, or you have a man, you have to get more sutures in because there's more load to move. So in men, start with this type of protocol. You compromise on the number, you compromise on the result. And if you have a severe case, doesn't really matter putting more sutures. What you need is to treat with other modalities because that one is not enough. Repeating the same thing. For the lower face, you got the upper jowl and the lower jowl. And here you can get the 12 cones because you have room to go vertical. The more vertical you go and the more cones you have, the better. And, but if the marionette line is more prominent than the jowl, and again, the jowl and marionette line are the same structure. It's a a uh, just a bit of time between them. You just have to do this, or sometimes you have to do all of it. And if you treat mid and lower face, just combine the both protocols and patterns. It's easy as that. Okay? How many people here are, were asked about brow lifts? I think everybody, probably. Now it's very Instagrammable also. Cat size, fox size. Good news, fox and cats have no eyebrows. So that's the funny part of it. Here you see there's a, a L shape, but the thing is, you're not doing the L shape technique. You're just lifting one side of the suture. You just lift this side of the suture. This one is just there to anchor. That's all. Nothing else. But if you do brow lifts under promise, don't promise a year and a half. I promise six to eight months if the patient adhere to a strict protocol with neurotoxins also. Because if you don't relax your orbicularis, you cannot lift anything. It's just going to fight with your thread all the time. Before. When you do before, is that seven days at least before? So, always. So, when these are two cases, my cases and Rami's case. Both of them have done neurotoxin seven days before. We can, there, I'm fairly happy with the results. The patient is much happier than I am. I want to keep it like this. The opposite is the wrong way. Neck. Is the, gladly, neck is still very, very surgical. And the neck, people say, let's treat double chins with threads. Double chin is extra fat, not extra skin. So if you have extra fat, again, if you remember the arrows from yesterday, address volume, reduce volume. Then you can tighten the skin. If it's just skin laxity, then you can probably use uh, uh, silhouette soft. Here is very simple. The distance between the angle of the mandible, which is halfway to the midline and the mastoid, is your entry point. If you have more than seven centimeters, you can use the 12 cones. Even if you lose one cone, five cones are better than four. If you have less than seven, you cannot do more than eight cones. And you, here you overcorrect. It's like the eyebrows. You have to overcorrect, otherwise you don't get the result. So you're going to have a fold of skin on the side. You're going to be pokering and unevenness, but you are just stretching skin. You need to do that. Couple of results. Before, immediately after. Again, the pictures are not 
are, are deformed somehow distorted. Two months, nine months. What is the difference? The biostimulation. Anything that relies only on mechanical is condemned to fail. Mechanical lasts you maximum six weeks. Then you have something that can be able to produce collagen to get like a scaffold for a new ligament to hold things in place. This patient told me, and then the picture, that her neck, she had some pigmentation on her neck and improved progressively. That was not addressed for pigmentation, but the biostimulation of the skin did, uh, did have that effect. The same patient on the side view immediately after, after two months and after nine months. But usually these are the patients you have here, like we have in Dubai. Heavy faces, you don't have to do fillers. And what you see below, and again, the screen is not helping a lot, is essentially what we did, change the shape of the face. This is the first thing you see, and shape is everything. Rami. Thank you. Right, okay. So, I've been told off by this guy, so this is the guy to blame because of timing. So I'm just going to mark, and then we have a workshop afterwards in the afternoon if you want to see the, the procedure. So just like what Francesco said, be before I start, Francesco said it, I'm going to say it again. Patient selection, patient selection, patient selection, patient selection is the secret of a successful thread treatment. Take one, if you want to take one thing out of me today, when it comes to filler, inject slowly. When it comes to threads, select your patients wisely. Reject the patients. Reject the patients. Because what, you need to select them wisely as far as sagging, mild to moderate, and as far as psychological stability as well. Because this is not a facelift. It's facial repositioning, right? It's far from a facelift, so therefore you choose mild to moderate sagging, good skin quality, very simple. Choose those patients wisely, you're gonna have them coming back again and again and again. Going back, just like what Francesco said, when you want to plan your procedure, you think with the end in mind. Most of our patients come in for the middle face and lower face. So middle third usually is the nasolabial, can we, yep, thank you. So it's the nasolabial, I draw a circle where the nasolabial fat pad is. Let's do it with a black one. And then I'm going to do the marinette. And then we're going to do the jowling fat pad. So those are usually the areas that I want to treat in most of the cases. Now, another thing, that's the difference between facelifting and silhouette soft or thread treatments. Facelifting, we cut, we undermine, we dissect, and we choose whatever vector line we want. When it comes to thread lifting, that's not the case. Because when it comes to thread, thread repositioning, you choose where you have the most sagging, the vector line that has the most sagging. And accordingly, you decide what your vector line is. It could be this way, it could be this way, it could be that way. Now, when you choose, what you need to think of is not, you, you don't only think of what you're treating, you're thinking of where the thread is going to go, where the tissue is going to go. So if you reposition this way, you need to think, right, I sorted out the, jow the jowling problem, but where am I taking the tissue? Is it going to close the eye? Then I'm not going to choose. Then this is not the right treatment for her. In most of the cases, the, this is the vector line that we have. And therefore, we draw our vector line according to the sagging we have. So, thinking with the end in mind, we thought what we want to treat, we chose our vector lines, now we know our vector lines, our last cone is going to go straight into the fat pad that we're trying to reposition, which means it's going to go here, here, and here. And then that's the planning done. You go to autopilot. And this is what the guys in Sinclair did. They did something really cool and smart, which they created this ruler. This ruler decides where your point of entry is when your exit points are. Slowly, as you use it, you, you work more and more, you'll find out you don't need the ruler. But to start off with it, this is going to tell you everything. Because it tells you exactly where the last cone is going to be. See that white cone on the ruler? And it tells you where the exit point is. And it tells me where the entry point is as well. And then from the back, once I twist it, it tells me where the exit point is going to be. 
So you don't have to worry about marking and, and measuring because the ruler is going to tell you everything. So make sure you use that to start off with. And it will tell you as well whether an 8 cone is enough or, or whether we need a 12 cone. Remember, we're repositioning from the mobile zone to the immobile zone. So the mobile zone has to have the cones what we're going to reposition, and then we're going to anchor in the back. Local anesthesia is placed at the point of exit and entry only, not along the track, because pain is an indication that I'm in the wrong plane. So I want the patient to feel as the thread is going, and simply the thread goes into the subcutaneous level. Not more superficial, not more deep. Right patient, good quality, skin quality, mild to moderate sagging, do the right measurements, and you'll end up with a perfect result.